What is up, you guys? Welcome to another edition of Controversial Thoughts. Now, on Rumble, and maybe not on YouTube for much longer. We'll see. So if you're watching this on Instagram, great. Uh, if you are listening to this and you want to see a video of this with figures and studies that I refer to, go to Rumble. You can just search my name, Paul Saladino, under channels and you'll find it, okay? So I wanted to do a video about whether you need to count calories on an animal-based diet. So this is a really interesting, controversial topic. And I should also say a contentious topic. My short answer is that I believe no. You do not have to count calories on an animal-based diet. And I will explain why I believe that. So let's start from the beginning. We know that diets that count calories inevitably fail. There is so much research to suggest that counting calories puts you in a mental, physical, physiological prison. Listen to the podcast I did with Herman Ponser if you want more about this, why the people on The Biggest Loser inevitably fail. When you restrict calories without changing food quality, you will fail long-term. You will fail long-term. In the short-term, like The Biggest Loser, you may have weight loss, but you will fail long-term because your body will adjust, it will adapt, it will change your metabolism, and it will make you get those calories back eventually. We know that diets that are simply calorie restricted are going to fail long-term. This, this is evolution. This is millions of years of evolution working against that. The magic of weight loss, I believe, happens when you change food quality. And what's so cool about this is that when you change food quality by eliminating things like seed oils, I'm gonna talk about those today, and other things like processed sugar, not in a food matrix. So this would be processed sugar, sucrose, high fructose corn syrup, not things like fruit and honey, big differences between those two. You eliminate those things and I believe that your satiety mechanisms will come back. And that will allow you to eat high quality food, nutrient dense organs, meat, less toxic plant foods that I recommend on an animal-based diet, avoiding seed oils, avoiding processed non-food matrix-based sugars, and you will be satiated. And then you don't need to count calories and you will lose weight. So let's start with this. There is really no question that we are eating more calories today than we have in the past. As you heard in the podcast that I did with Tucker Goodrich this week, on seed oils and ending that debate. The question is why we are eating more calories. Why? And the canned answer that is unsatisfying to me is, oh, it's hyper palatable food. Well, yeah, but what is it about the food that makes it so hyper palatable? Is it the processing or is it something else? Because we know that you can do a lot of things to food and doesn't necessarily become hyper palatable. I believe it is the addition of these seed oils that is making these foods hyper palatable. And the combination of seed oils with sugars not based in the food matrix, those two, I think, are firecrackers that are going off in our brain, it's hijacking our, uh, our satiety mechanisms and causing us to eat more. So this is from my buddy, Jeff Knobs, uh, com. his post, What Causes Chronic Disease. It's an amazing post if you haven't seen it. The trend in daily calories from major food groups, you can see that vegetable oils, this red line, have gone skyrocketing, okay? We've also eating more root vegetables, we're eating a little bit more on sugars and sweeteners, and we're eating a little bit more on carbs. If you look at the meat, that's going up a little bit, but not a ton. So you can see he notes here, we're eating 88 calories more per day, 125 calories more per day of meat, uh, 185 calories more per day of grains, and 423 more calories per day of vegetable oils. So Tucker asked a really good question in the podcast that we did, which was, why are we doing that? I believe we're doing that because something in this mix is hijacking our satiety. It's not that everybody is just suddenly eating more. We have millions of years of satiety mechanisms in our body to tell us, hey, you're getting enough of these nutrients, stop eating. But when that doesn't kick in, we keep eating and eating and eating. And I think that the research around the byproducts of linoleic acid, specifically linoleic acid, leading to 2-AG and anandamide, and I'm gonna talk about studies with that, which are endogenous cannabinoids binding to CB1, so cannabinoid one and cannabinoid two receptors in the brain leading to overeating. So 
let's start or let's continue with a little bit about Ramona Band. This is a drug that I talked about with Tucker in the podcast as well. Ramona Band is a fascinating molecule that isn't really in practice anymore because of serious side effects, but it is a, an inverse agonist for the cannabinoid one uh, receptor in the brain. And it has been shown to have pretty significant effects at the level of obesity and cardiometabolic disease because it decreases appetite. It restores satiety for people. Check out this study. Potential role of the endocannabinoid receptor antagonist, Ramona Band, in the management of cardiometabolic risk, a narrative review of the available data. The endocannabinoid system is an endogenous physiological system composed of two cannabinoid receptors, several endogenous ligands, okay? What they say here is that large randomized trials of Theronamine have demonstrated efficacy in the treatment of overweight and obese individuals with weight loss significantly greater than a reduced calorie diet alone. In addition, multiple other cardiometabolic parameters were improved in the treatment groups, including, including increased levels of high density lipoprotein cholesterol, reduced triglycerides, reduced waist circumference, improved insulin sensitivity, decreased insulin levels, and in diabetic persons, improvement in glycosylated hemoglobin percentage. That is also known as hemoglobin A1C, okay? Now, the reason Ramona Band is no longer on the market is there was an increase in the adverse effects of depression, anxiety, irritability, nausea, and then Ramona Band treated groups. But what is Ramona Band doing? It is blocking the action of 2-AG and anandamide at the CB1 receptor. Well, you can do that by eating less linoleic acid in your diet and having less of these ligands, the 2-AG and the anandamide produced as breakdown products from linoleic acid without any of the negative cardiacs or negative psychiatric side effects that Ramona Band has. So this is the most important article that I will show you guys in this uh, controversial thoughts. Dietary linoleic acid elevates endogenous 2-AG and anandamide and induces obesity. This is a mouse study, but look at what they did here. They gave these mice multiple different diets, 1% linoleic acid, 8% linoleic acid, and um, they gave them uh, both of those with EPA plus DHA as separate diets. And they say even here, LA was isolated as an independent variable to reflect the dietary increase in LA percentage from 1% energy as I talked about with Tucker, to 8% energy occurring in the United States during the 20th century. So they're pretty cleverly mimicking the increase in linoleic acid in the human population observed in that time and giving it to mice. What do they say? What, what do they find? Increasing linoleic acid from one to 8%, elevated arachidonic acid phospholipids in the liver and erythrocytes, it tripled 2-AG and 1-AG and AEA associated uh, with increased food intake, feed efficiency, and adiposity in mice. In summary, dietary linoleic acid, increased tissue arachidonic acid, subsequently elevated 2-AG plus 1-AG and AEA, uh, which is anandamide, resulting in the development of the diet-induced obesity. The adipogenic effect of LA can be prevented by consuming sufficient EPA and DHA to reduce the AA, the arachidonic acid phospholipid pool, and normalize endocannabinoid tone. As an aside, I think this speaks to the benefits of omega-3 fatty acids, not necessarily in mega doses, but to mitigate the damaging effects of omega-6. Now, if you don't have excess omega-6, I don't think you need to be eating mega doses of omega-3, but I would suggest, and I would hypothesize, that the benefits of omega-3 are to protect us from the, from the negative side effects of excess omega-6. And if you're not getting a bunch of omega-6, you don't need mega doses of omega-3, a la many people in the space who are recommending four plus grams of fish oil a day, which I think is ludicrous, evolutionarily inconsistent, and will have many other negative side effects. I'm not a fan of massive doses of fish oil. I've done controversial thoughts videos on that as well in the past. So here is the take home, guys. Your satiety mechanisms work unless you break them with excess linoleic acid and linoleic acid breakdown products, 2-AG anandamide, which bind to the CB1 receptor in your brain. You can block that with Ramona Band, or you can just stop eating excess amounts of linoleic acid, like I talked about with Tucker on the podcast. And I believe if you do that, and you give your body time to change the linoleic acid in your cell membranes, your satiety will return. 
And in that situation, I don't believe you need to count calories. I don't believe you need to be in a calorie prison. I don't believe you need to be that focused on counting calories that your life is taken up by this. Now, you can eat to satiety. This is why I said in a previous video, and I tweeted this, eat meat, eat meat and organs as much as you want. That's all you need to do. It's like the Michael Pollan saying, right? Eat food, mostly meat and organs, as much as you want. Add in some of the least toxic carbohydrates. You won't get fat. Know what the linoleic acid amount is in your diet in terms of energy percentage. Make it as low as possible. Avoid excess amounts of linoleic acid, either in seed oils, especially in seed oils or other sources that I talked about in the podcast with Tucker, et cetera. And I believe you will not have to count calories. Your life will get so much easier and you will actually lose weight and keep it off as a sustainable model in a human that is thriving and that is happy and that is not in a caloric prison. Sure, you can lose weight by counting calories and restricting them, but then you go to calorie prison. I don't wanna live in calorie prison. I wanna be able to eat till I'm full and thrive. And this is what I see over and over and over in people I work with. Ben Patrick, Knees Over Toes guy, mentioned it in a recent podcast. Multiple clients that I've worked with recently have said the same thing. Experience this for yourself. Understand how an animal-based diet works. Understand the tenets of an animal-based diet. Get meat in, in your diet, get organs in your diet. If you need more organs in your diet, check us out at heartandsoil.co. This is what we do. We give you grass-fed, grass-finished, desiccated organ supplements to help you incorporate these things that are hard to get in your diet, critical components of nutrition. On the macro side, I've laid this out before. You don't really need to be crazy about your macros either. I wanna make sure that you get enough protein. One gram of protein per pound of body weight, go body weight per day at least. I'm 170 pounds, maybe 165 now, who knows. I get about 200 grams of protein a day. I'm meeting my 165 to 170 gram protein goal. One pound of meat is 100 grams of protein. Keep that in mind. If you're a 130 pound woman, you maybe need a pound and a quarter, a pound and a third of meat per day. A lot of us are not getting that. Get some organs in your diet, either fresh or desiccated. Include the least toxic sources of carbohydrates. I believe that's fruit and honey. I hinted at this in this video. Sugar not found in a food matrix, probably damaging for humans. Sugar in a food matrix, pretty sure it's benign. Not bad at all for you, okay? Lots of evidence for that. I've talked about that in previous controversial thoughts. Do those things. I don't believe you need to count calories and go to calorie prison. Avoid 2-AG, avoid excess 2-AG and anandamide from linoleic acid breakdown products and you'll thrive. You'll have satiety. It may take some time. As I talked about previously, one of the problems with polyunsaturated fatty acids is your body holds onto them. They get stored in your cell membranes. It may take some time for your body to change, to shift the cell membrane composition, but give it time, eat animal fats and you'll thrive. Welcome to freedom from calorie prison. Next week, I'll do a controversial thoughts on why I'm not a fan of olive oil and avocado oil. The real quick explanation there is that they're often rancid, processed, oxidized, and have higher levels of linoleic acid than you would get eating those foods. All right, guys, check us out at Heart and Soil. If you need desiccated organs in your life, reclaim your birthright to radical health. Don't count calories and go to calorie prison, just thrive. Love you all. Stay radical.